Hello friends, in this video let's see how the modulation transfer function helps in assessing the visual performance of EDOF and multifocal lenses. The MTF is the benchmark to understand the performance standards of optical system and is the ability to transfer visual quality from the viewed object to the perceived image. If this is perfectly accomplished, the MTF value is 1 or 100%. Since the MTF is primarily concerned with the transfer of contrast from object to image, let us understand a bit about contrast perception. Contrast is the degree of blackness to whiteness in a given target. The contrast threshold is the smallest difference in black and white hue that can be discerned by the human eye. The reciprocal of this is called the contrast sensitivity. This is the ability to discern slight changes in luminance between regions in an object that are not separated by definite and clear-cut borders. This ability is equally important as that required to perceive areas with sharp outlines in an object. And this is what the contrast sensitivity does. The contrast sensitivity is checked at various spatial frequencies, which is just a fancy way of saying that it is tested at different sizes or widths of alternating dark and light bands with indistinct borders. Low spatial frequency simply implies broader bands which have high contrast sensitivity and high spatial frequency implies narrower bands which are associated with a lower contrast sensitivity which is generally speaking. Since the contrast is measured between dark and light bands with indistinct borders, these bands are represented as a sinusoidal curve and not a box curve in which the borders are sharp. The height of the sinusoidal curves is the difference between the lightest and the darkest points and it indicates the contrast while the horizontal spacing between the peaks indicate the spatial frequency. Narrower bands have higher spatial frequency than broader bands. Spatial frequency is calculated as cycles per degree or line pairs per millimeter. One cycle is the combined length of adjacent dark and light bands. For each spatial frequency, the band luminance is progressively decreased till the threshold contrast is reached from which the contrast sensitivity for that spatial frequency is calculated. Now we have to formulate the Michelson's formula in which the contrast sensitivity is the L max minus L minimum divided by L max plus L minimum, where L max is the luminance on the lighter surface and L minimum is the luminance of the darker surface. Weber's formula says that contrast sensitivity is equal to LB minus LT by LB, where LB is the luminance of the background and LT is the luminance of target. Weber's formula is used to find contrast sensitivity of letters. The contrast sensitivity is calculated thus for various spatial frequencies. Generally speaking, contrast sensitivity is much better for lower spatial frequency and lesser for higher. This contrast sensitivity for different spatial frequencies can be plotted as a curve called the contrast sensitivity function, which demarcates the visible from the invisible part of what we see in our visible spectrum. The same principles can be applied to color contrast as well. The Pelly robson chart tests contrast sensitivity for a given spatial frequency only and does not give us the contrast sensitivity function. While the contrast sensitivity function is a curve depicting contrast for a range of spatial frequencies, MTF is a collection of multiple contrast sensitivity function curves emanating from a given target or object and gives us a more comprehensive picture. The given object like the scene above has millions of points with many spatial frequencies and levels of contrast. The ability of the lens system to capture all these fine details into the retinal image is called the modulation transfer function and hence it depicts the visual quality. The MTF is therefore the best indicator of the visual performance of various premium IOLs and not merely measuring the visual acuity alone at various distances. The modulation transfer function can therefore be calculated by dividing the contrast sensitivity of the points in the object viewed from that of the contrast sensitivity in the image formed for a specific spatial frequency and is given by this formula c dash is divided by c for a given frequency u where c dash is a corresponding contrast in the image and c is the contrast in the object modulation transfer function is calculated for a specific spatial frequency pupil size and distance 
it is expressed as a ratio. If you say that the MTF is 1, it is equal to 100% transference of contrast, 0.5 is 50% and so on. An MTF of 0.9 is excellent, 0.7 to 0.9 is good, 0.5 to 0.7 is average, 0.3 to 0.5 is below average and less than 0.3 or 30% is extremely poor. MTF plots can be represented in two formats. The MTF plot for a given spatial frequency and pupil size at varying distances can be plotted similar to a defocus curve. This tells you the contrast sensitivity at various range and distances or for a fixed pupil size and distance over different spatial frequencies. Now this is taken from the eye trace printout and this is how the contrast sensitivity pattern looks. The plot on the left shows a red box. If the MTF plot of the IOL lies within this box, it indicates very poor contrast function. The plot on the right shows extremely poor levels of contrast as seen in a patient with a significant cataract. How do we assess the visual performance of premium intraocular lens that we implant? So generally speaking, what we do is that we measure the visual acuity for distance and near. We may check the contrast sensitivity like the Pelirobsin chart, which checks contrast only for a fixed spatial frequency and is quite inadequate to give us something about the visual quality. For presbyopia correcting intraocular lenses, many of us perform a defocus curve to understand the range of vision as well as the depth of focus. However, this chart may be quite misleading. Now, this is a defocus curve in a monofocal IOL implanted patient showing good vision for distance, poor intermediate and a non-existent near vision. If we compare this plot to a 55-year-old presbyopic individual wearing only the distance correction, we find that they have the similar type of curve to a monofocal IOL implantation with good distance and a poor intermediate and near vision. Now this is a binocular defocus curve of my 22 year old student showing excellent vision across all distances from infinity to 30 centimeters. And this is the binocular defocus curve in a 63 year old female patient who had bilateral synergy IOL implanted, patient has 66 for distance and N6 for near and a great vision at all distances from 6 meters to 30 centimeters. Now does this mean that the synergy IOL implantation will restore the patient's vision to that of a 22 year old emetrope? Herein lies the fallacy of the defocus curve which many of us are not aware of because it can be quite misleading. And let me explain this concept. The defocus curve only plots the visual acuity and not the visual quality. It projects a false sense of post-op visual performance. In a young person, the light utilization is 100% at all distances from infinity to near point of fixation due to active accommodation. The MTF is high and the quality of vision is excellent. After cataract surgery, since the accommodation is lost, the light energy is spread over the area of the increased depth of focus as in this case of an EDOF lens represented above. This will therefore significantly reduce the visual quality and the quality of vision that is represented by the modulation transfer function is also much lower at all distances even though this patient may document a 6 by 6 distance vision and a reasonably good intermediate vision. Thus, defocus curves may be flattering. In an EDOF IOL, generally about 80 to 90 percent of light energy is utilized and this is spread over the entire range of the depth of focus provided by the IOL. In a multifocal IOL, only 40 percent of light energy is utilized for distance and near and the remaining 20 percent is lost. In a trifocal IOL, an additional 4 percent of light energy is utilized with the second order rays from the intermediate focus being utilized for the near focus. Thus, in a phacic emetrope with a good range and amplitude of accommodation, close to 100% of the light energy is used at all distances from distance to near. The visual quality therefore is excellent. With each and every presbyopia correcting intraocular lens, the patient buys the extra depth of focus and range of vision at the expense of compromising on his visual quality. And this should be borne in mind. Now this is the MTF recorded in the eye trace machine for a fixed pupil size and a fixed distance in a normal phacic patient. The internal MTF indicates that the crystalline lens is being tested. On the x-axis is the spatial frequencies tested in cycles per degree. On the y-axis is the modulation transfer function expressed as a percentage. This can also be represented as, as a ratio. 
The MTF plot is seen as a yellow line in this particular printout. Normally the MTF is better at low spatial frequencies than in high spatial frequencies and it keeps on decreasing till it reaches a cutoff frequency level. It is important for us to note what the MTF function is at 5 to 15 cycles per degree spatial frequencies which is the most commonly used ones in our day to day life and in our daily existence. You can see that the MTF at 5 cycles per degree is close to 90% which is excellent and at 10 cycles it is close to 78%. The MTF line is also well above the red cutoff box which is set at 40%. This is the MTF printout of an eye trace machine in a patient with trifocal eyewall implanted. Now let's simply focus on the internal MTF function which depicts the function of the intraocular lens. On the left is the defocus curve which looks nice and rosy but the modulation transfer function tells us a totally different story. The MTF at 5 cycles per degree and 10 cycles per degree is only about 20 and 10 percent respectively for this particular multifocal and this corresponds to very low quality of vision. The range of vision in the visual acuity seems to be good however the patient's contrast sensitivity is poor so can we be happy that we've delivered a great result in this particular patient by just looking at the defocus curve in fact what these lenses gain in terms of increased depth of focus or multifocality is always at the expense of losing out on the contrast or visual quality function and i'm not even bringing up the issue of photic phenomena experienced with the diffractive design of intraocular lenses Looking at the MTF plots and the MTF defocus curves for many EDOF and multifocal IOLs, we find that generally speaking the visual quality for distance is only about 40 to 50 percent and this falls to about 20 to 30 percent for intermediate and near and this occurs across all range of intraocular lenses even though the visual acuity may be good for distance and near in many of these lenses. Such a trade-off can be acceptable in a patient who has a visually significant cataract in which the MTF is severely compromised. But offering it as an option for simple presbyopia in which the visual acuity is excellent for distance but with a compromise for near vision requires a highly motivated patient willing to accept the halos and glare and the drop in the visual quality in order to simply gain spectacle independence. So my final word is that there is no intraocular lens available today that can even come close to the visual performance of the natural human crystalline lens. Spectacle independence is being sought after at the expense of compromise in the visual quality. True accommodating intraocular lenses which allow for 100% light energy utilization at all distances is the holy grail that will come closest to the human crystalline lens. And let us wait for such a day to arrive. Till then, thank you for your attention.